Let's go to page 713 on your handout. And today's lesson is to, uh, to analyze the data. And so there are several terms that on your handout. Okay, so you have the first quartile and the third quartile. So I will, ex so I will explain to you what this means as we go through the example one. Okay, so if you look at this example, example one, you have all this data, right? So they ask you to find A, the median, B, the first quartile, C, the, the third quartile. So what this means is this, okay? If you look at this graph over here, see so you have the higher score, you have the lower score, right? And what happens is that the, as you look at the, the scores, right, the middle score would be the median, not the average. The average is mean. Okay, so to find average, you have to add all the scores together and you divide by the number of people, right? That's the, that's the mean or the average. Median means just the middle number, okay? So what happens is you have the highest, you got lowest, right? And you keep going, and the middle number between the highest and lowest is a median. Then from there, the middle number, again, it's not an average, it's the middle number between the median and the highest score. So you keep going, and that's your third quartile, okay? The middle number between the median and the lowest score is your first quartile, okay? So, so for this example, let's find the median. So median, you start from the highest and the lowest, right? So you just kind of keep going. So, so you kind of, so in, in a way, it's like this three and this three will cancel out. This three and this three will cancel out. And the eight and nine will cancel out. So again, you keep going down from both ends. So here's your middle number, okay? So over here, example one, So the lowest score is 64, and the highest score is 100, and the, med the, the, me the, the median or the middle score is 85, okay? Again, it's not the average, it's just the, the, the middle number. Okay, so now, you, so now this is the median, and this is the highest score, right? So now you have to find the middle number between them. So you can just go down like this, right? Okay, so 92 would be your third quartile. Now to find the first quartile, again you use the lowest and the median, and you just go from both ends to find the middle number Wait, over here. So this two, this two, this two, this two is two, 73. Okay, so you just go from both ends. So again from here, you just go both ends, you find the middle between them, that's your first quartile. Okay, from the median and the highest number, you just go from both ends and you keep going until they meet in the middle. And that's, a, that's your middle number between these two, that's your third quartile. So again, it's very, very easy, okay? So, so these are your dots, okay? Now, next thing you have to do is you have to make the box and the whisker plot. So if you're gonna make the box and whisker plot on these, then this is what you do, okay? You put a box over here and put a box like that and from here to here is your whisker. So this is your box. So this is your box and whisker plot. Okay, so from the third quartile to the highest number, you draw the line. From the first quartile to the lowest number, you draw the line. And between them, you draw the, draw the box. And so that's it. So it's, again, it's very simple. So this is the lowest number, this is the highest number, and the number between them, in the middle number between them is your median. And the middle number between the median and the highest number is your third quartile. The, the middle number between the lowest number and the median is your first quartile. And then after that, you can you know, draw the dot, and then you put a box over here, and you draw the two lines. So this is called a box, a uh, box and whisker plot. And that's it for this one. Okay, again, very easy. And the range, okay, range is the, high, the difference between highest and the lowest. So in this case, the range, it's going to be equal to 100 minus 64, so equal to 36, okay? So again, this is your first quartile. This is, uh, this is the lowest number. This is the first quartile. This is the median. This is the third quartile, and this is the highest number. So those are important information you need to know. Okay. Now let's go to the next part of the things you need to know, okay? So the next thing is, let's go to example uh, five. 
So let's go to example 5. So on page 715 on the hand now, okay, example 5. So over here you got all this data, right? So let's go and read through example 5. It says the stem and leaf plot at the right shows the distribution of the heights in centimeters of a member of a high school basketball team. From the mean, the standard deviation for the distribution, and um, so that, that's going to do that. But before you do that, that actually there's a whole bunch of things you, you, you need to know. So for this kind of problem, okay, I will ask you to do this. Okay, so what you need to do is first, you want to arrange all your data okay, and in an in a, in a, in a, in orderly manner. So I'm going to start with, so I'm going to, so this would be my height. Okay, so it's my first column or whatever the entry is. So I have 175. Then I have 178, then I have 180, then I have 180, then I have 181, I have 184, 184, 184, 185, 185, and 188, then I have 192. Okay. So first, what you want to do is you need to find a sum. So get your calculator and just going to add all this together. You're going to get 2196. The next thing you want to do is you want to find the mean or the average. Okay, so M, so there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So there are 12 entries, so you divide by 12. So it gives you 183. Then next, you want to find the range over here. So range is the difference between the, high, the, the highest and the lowest. Okay, so go and subtract. Okay, so 192 minus 175 equals 17. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Okay, the next thing you need to do is the next column, what you need to do is you need to figure out the deviation. So D is a deviation. Deviation means how much is off from the average. Okay, so here's your median, here's your average. So you want to find out how much is off. So this is off by 8, so this is minus 8. This one is minus 5. This one is minus 3. This one is minus 3. This one is minus 2. This one is plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 2, plus 2, plus 5, plus 9. Okay, so can you find a deviation from the average? The next column you need to do is the D square. Okay, so just go and square that. 64, 25, 9, 9, 4, 1, 1, 1, 4, 4, 25, 81. Okay. Then the next thing you need to do is you need to find the sum of the d squares. So you need to find the sum. So you can notice the sum of this, sum of that. Okay. So when you add all this together, you get 228. The next thing what you need to do is you need to find the, the, the variance. So v, v just like this, you find the average. Okay, so you divide that by 12. So 228 divided by 12 equals 19. Okay. So again, just like this over here, first you, you list this and you find the sum, divide by 12 to find the, the, the mean. That's your average. And after you find the deviation of each one, and then you square that, and then you find the sum and you find the average. But but the average of the of the d square is called variance, so it's a v. The average of the, the entry is called the mean, uh, the, the mean, so it's average. Then after that, you need to find something called a standard deviation. Okay, it's a Greek letter sigma or s. Okay, that is a square root of that. So you take the square root of that. So 19, you take the square root, you get 
4.35a uh, something, so 4.4. Okay. So again, so, so sigma is equal to square root of v. Okay. And, and the easy to remember, the reason we have to take the square root because look over here, what we did over here? We square that, right? So you take the square root to get some kind of, uh, in a way, it's got to kind of undo that, undo the square, right? So that's where it came from. So this is a standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation kind of shows you how, how the data is spread out. If the standard deviation is, is really, really big, that means the data spread out really far apart. Now, if the data is all bunched together, your standard deviation would be kind of small. Okay, so let's, let's go and do some uh, practice.